All right, we're still, we spent a lot of time on 3D vectors. We're still here. Uh, we've done quarter direction angles. We've done spherical angles. We've done dimensions. Let's kind of put them all together. You can look back at my old tests. I like to give problems kind of like this, where, hey, one vector is given as this, these angles, one vector is given these angles, one vector is given as these. Let's do this. Let's add these vectors and find the resultant um, and then calculate the resultants according to direction angles. Which one do you want to start with? We could do QP or F. I'm going to start with Q. So my first thought is, okay, what type of angles are they given? This is almost a little bit of a combination, but it gives me this 50 degree angle and then it tells me something about the shadow on the floor. This is, it's almost spherical. It's kind of a combination of spherical and dimensions. But anyway, for this one, what's my process? I'm gonna take Q and I'm gonna break it up into QZ and QXY. Then I'm gonna, gonna take QXY, break it up into QX and QY. All right, so first, let me look at this 50 degree angle right here and break this one up into, it's a 2D problem uh, where, where this, this is really this down here. So maybe I could look at this triangle right here. And if it's 50 degrees from vertical, then that means it is what, 40 degrees. So, so it's a 40 degree angle right here. Uh, so the XY would be three cosine 40. The Z would be three sine 40 right there. So this would be, uh, the XY would be 2.3 and the Z would be 1.93. Now, did you notice that this was actually pointed, you see the arrow, it's pointed in. Oh, it's pointed in. So my Z component is, it's not, it's not going up, it is down. And I've got to, remember for spherical, you've got to give it your own negatives. So this is negative 1.93 right there. <clears throat> the X, Y, I'm not going to make it positive or I'm not going to make it negative <clears throat> any times. But anyway, now I'm going to take this <clears throat> and break it up into its components. Right, take this and break it up into its components, and now I'm kind of given um, I'm kind of given uh, dimensions. It's still a 2D problem, but it's kind of a dimensions 2D with that uh, 15 and the 8. All right, so with the 15 and the 8, uh, 15 and 8, that would make that 17 uh, right here. So now I'm looking at this triangle or this triangle. All right, but here we go. I'm gonna take the 2.3. Let's start with the X component. <clears throat> the X component you see would be 2.3, uh, 15 over 17. Uh, what is that? Let me, sorry, let me get this. Uh, all right, y'all can go ahead and work, work faster than me. Uh, 2.3, uh, 15 over 17 would be 2.03, and the Y component would be 2.38 over 17. Uh, the Y component would be 1.08. I've got to give it my own negatives. If this is, po it's coming from this quadrant, it's pointed down that way. Um, it is going down, so that's a negative Z. It's going towards the right, so that's a positive Y, uh, but it is going kind of back, uh, so that's a negative x. So, <clears throat> maybe I should write these as q's. All right, here we go. q, written as a vector. Negative 2.03 in the i, positive 1.08 in the j, negative 1.93 in the k. I need units somewhere. The units are kilonewtons. Box it in because that, that's what it is, is saying. Oh, sorry, this first sentence. Yeah, that's what this first sentence is saying. Express these as a Cartesian vector. So here, there we go. That is Q as a Cartesian vector. All right. Now let's look at P. P, what type of angles are we given? Even though it's not shaded, I think this is a more, a more clear 
This is spherical angles. I think spherical is the, maybe the hardest. Uh, so make sure you can definitely gonna get throw that on, on the test for you. Um, so make sure you can do that. So for spherical, I think of two 2D problems. First, let's look at this triangle right here. It's a 40 degree triangle. I can find the Z component and the XY component. So let's start with P. Well, maybe I'll do all this in pink. P um, XY would be 2 cosine 40, whereas P Z would be 2 sine 40. All right, 2 cosine 40, 1.53. Uh, 2 sine 40, 1.23. Um, and then I'm going to take the XY. So now I'm looking at this XY and breaking it up into the X and the Y component. That's just a 30 degree um, triangle. So take, whoops, sorry. Take this 1.53. And I would say that P, let me start with Y. PY would be 1.53 cosine 30, whereas PX would be 1.53 sine 30. Uh, 1.53 cosine 30 would be 1.33. Uh, 1.53 sine 30 would be 0.765. Oh, but I've got to give them positives and negatives uh, myself. Right, I'm going to get, give these positives and negatives myself. Which components are positive? Which components are negative? Uh, it's going up, so that's a positive Z. It's going to the right, so that's a positive Y. Uh, but it is going back, right, behind the wall there. That's a negative right there. So this P, written as its vector, is negative 0.765 in the I, plus 1.33 in the J, plus 1.29 in the K. I need units. The units are kilonewtons, um, there we go, and box that in because I'm asking for that. All right, now let me choose a different color. Green, so let's do this force right here, this force one. Those three angles are coordinate direction angles. I think you're going to read the sigh, sigh of relief if you see coordinate direction angles there. Uh, wait, now first of all, I didn't have to give you all three. You might can tell from the, um, the um, font here, um, that 72, I might not have had to give you that. You could have worked for that one. You could have calculated that one. Uh, but maybe I was being generous on this test or trying to shorten it. But So be careful because you don't have to be given all three quarter direction angles. If you're given two, you can find the third by cosine squared adding up to one. Uh, but anyway, so this force is a quarter direction angle. from so something in F equals FU. So F equals F, which is one times u. u is cosine alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is the angle to x, and that's 60 degrees, yeah, is the angle to x, so cosine 60 in the i. Beta, beta is the angle to y, that 72 is the angle to y, so yeah, that is um, the, the angle right there to y. So this would be cosine 72 in the j. And now here, that 36, is that the angle to z? Well, no, that's the angle to negative z. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say plus uh, cosine of what? Help me out here. 144, right? Would that add up to 180? Yeah. Uh, plus 144. Uh, so that is uh, my what I'm going to do. Your other option would have been to say negative cosine 36. All right, either of those would give you this answer, which I apologize that my I cannot read this very clearly. Uh, but this F is, uh, let's see, I, I think it's 0.5 in the I, 0 0.309 in the J, and then is it minus 0.8? Oh, 08 uh, in the K. All right, do, do that um, on your own. And double check me there, because this is off, off the page that I'm following. Okay, so that was just that short first sentence. Express those as Cartesian vectors. We needed to do those, and now is the easy part. We can add them up. So when you add them up, only add up the I's 
together. So negative 2.03, negative 0.765, positive 0.5 would give me an I of negative 2.3 in the I. Uh, add up the J's. 1.08, 1.33, 0 0.309, all those were positive. Point, uh, 2.72 in the J. <clears throat> And then add up the Ks. Negative 1.93, positive 1.29, negative 0.808, negative 1.45 in the K. Units are kilonewtons. All right. And we've done this last part so much that I'm going to kind of skip it. But make, make sure you know how to do R equals R U. If you know this R and, and it... We're not told this magnitude, but you can get this magnitude, that squared plus that squared plus that squared. Take the square root, and this u is cosine alpha i plus cosine beta j plus cosine gamma k. Uh, see if you can get alpha, this is what I've got, 126.8 degrees, beta 44.9 degrees, and gamma uh, 112.2 degrees. Now let me see if those make sense. Uh, my two negative components give me obtuse angles. Yes, my positive is acute. Um, the larger the magnitude, the further away from 90 degrees. Uh, so this 2.72, I bet that 44.9 is farthest away from 90 degrees. Um, and this one is farther away from 90 degrees than that one. So there are a few things you can do to, to see if your answers make sense. Uh, but we've done that so much that I think that that's the easy part of this problem is taking that vec that final resultant vector and spitting out its coordinate direction angle. So there we go. That's a good, nice, long problem. Um, I think spherical angles is what's hardest for me. I don't know about y'all. So make sure you recognize spherical angles. Make sure you can understand that spherical process of taking the first vector, breaking it up into z and its projection on the floor, and then taking that projection and breaking it up into its x and y. It's two two-dimensional problems right there, and you're giving it your own positives and negatives. All right, well, there we go.